uh, let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I was uh, I was probably one of the worst investors in the world back in the uh, when I started being a stockbroker. I got out of the brokerage business because I discovered that most of the uh, brokerage firms didn't have any more ideas about what was making prices go up or down than anybody else. So I got out of the business. And then somebody threw candlesticks on my desk years later and said, you were a stockbroker. What do you think of candlesticks? And it sounded so sophisticated, I didn't even bother looking at it for, for months. But they kept badgering me. And uh, so finally, I, I picked it up. And I said, well, man, this makes sense. So I started looking through the charts and the more sense it made. So I went through a few years of uh, really studying candlesticks, every single one that I could. There was about 50 or 60 candlestick signals in the candlestick universe, and I was trying to learn every single one of them. But as, through the years, I've discovered there's only 12 signals that you need to learn. We call those the 12 major signals, six bullish, six bearish. And the nice thing about candlestick analysis is that it's the graphic depiction of what's going on in human emotions. And the basic assumption or the basic premise of investing is that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's what candlesticks do for us. They're the graphic depiction of, uh, of candlesticks. Now, I learned everything I could because back then, there was nobody doing candlesticks. They were just kind of relatively new in the United States. So I had to learn everything. I didn't have anybody to go and ask to get a second opinion to see if I was learning things right or not. The only time I got a second opinion is I would go to the doctor and I'd say, what's wrong with me? And he said, you're fat. And I said, well, I think I want a second opinion. He goes, all right, you're ugly too. So I started learning everything I could about candlesticks. So we're going to kind of, I can see that quite a few people haven't seen any of the presentations before. So I'm going to kind of go a little bit slower. But the uh, what we're going to try to do is candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling. And one of the best indicators to use is kind of a derivative of John Bollinger's uh, Bollinger Bands. We call it the T-line, which is the 8 exponential moving average. And it makes it uh, very simple. You can analyze. Uh, here's what our charts look like. The, the uh, red line is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. The gray line is the 20-day simple moving average. And the reason we have these on our charts is that every major money, money manager around the world uses those moving averages to make their decisions about their portfolio. The advantage we have with candlesticks is we can see exactly what their decisions were at those important technical levels. Uh, and the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So you can analyze a daily chart. If you're a long -term, longer term investor, I'm a swing trader, so my trades usually last anywhere from two to 10 trading days. But if you're trading on an intraday chart, the 10 minute chart, uh, I use the 10 minute chart when I'm trading soybeans, cotton, cattle, uh, the dollar, currency, or not currency, uh, crude oil, uh, because they're just as effective for day trading. So the important factor on here is what we call the T line, the eight exponential moving average. The T line is basically a like a Fibonacci characteristic, it is a natural. Uh, level for where everybody is buying and selling. It's like a Fibonacci number. And the other moving averages, the 200, the 50, and the 20, they all act like magnets because everybody is watching those. Nobody watches the T-line. And it's, it's not anything that's out there on most people's charts. So when it has a very simple aspect to it, which is if you see a candlestick buy signal, you can go long, if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can go long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. And there's one caveat to that. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability you're gonna come back and test the T-line. So if we see a candlestick reversal signal, and this is a doji, a doji is where they open and close at the same, or pretty close to the same level, which means there's indecision between the bulls and the bears. 
if you see that going on in the overbought condition, and my conditions for overbought are stochastics, my setting for stochastics are 1233. Oversold is when it's trading below 20. Overbought is when it's trading above 80. So the Japanese rice traders make it very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal occurring in the oversold condition, the probabilities are pretty strong that you're going to be heading up. Conversely, if you see a candlestick sell signal in an overbought condition, the probabilities are pretty strong you're going to start heading back down. So again, the moving averages act like magnets and just have a very simple rule that if you see a, a trend occurring with the uh, uh, and you stay long, key line is just if you if you put the combination of what candlestick charts are and the T line, candlestick charts are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling. That's that's the graphic depiction of human nature. And the T line is a self uh, fulfilling uh, I say support level for human nature. So if you combine those two and very simple, if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. The stochastic settings are 1233. That's slow stochastics. Now, stochastics aren't your important factor. Basically, all it does is tell you if you see a candlestick buy signal in oversold condition, you can stay long. Should you be ready to sell if you're in the overbought condition? Not until you see a candlestick reversal signal. So conversely, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see that candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. So it makes trend analysis very easy. You see them sell signals along the way, but notice that you didn't see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line until this level. So it keeps you in trends, even though you're seeing some selling, but if they can't close back below the T-line, you definitely stay long. If you see that sell signal and a close below the T-line, now you go short. This is what we call a doji sandwich. Notice the big down day, then a doji. Remember, a doji represents indecision between the bulls and the bears. And there's just a very simple rule of the doji, which is they're usually going to move it in the direction of how they open it after a doji, which means if they start trading lower the next day, they're taking it down further. You want to be going short, and you stay short until you see a buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. So it makes it very simple. If we see candlestick sell signals, like a doji gap down and a close below the T-line, we're going short until we see that buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. What is the measure of the T-line? It's the eight exponential moving average. So again, the T-line has, or the candlestick signals and the T-line have truisms, which is the further away you move away from the T-line, the higher the probability they're going to come back up and test the T-line. So if we start seeing reversal signals, and this is what we call convergence analysis, we start seeing buy signals right on a major support level, we're buying immediately. Somebody asked me not too long ago, how many days does it take for your reversal to confirm? And the answer is zero. Once you see buy signals and they start confirming, um, you, you're, we're buying immediately, which does two things for us. One. It puts us in early, and everybody else's confirmation is adding to our profitability. And two, it puts us in early enough that candlestick signals, if, if this is the graphic depiction of human nature, the Japanese rice traders make it very simple. If this is the candle that told us the bulls were taking control after these signals here, where shouldn't it not close? It shouldn't close back below this level. If it does, you close it right back out and go on to the next one. So again, uh, I won't get into this too much, but as you can see, there's a little green line on here, which is the three T line. That's a three exponential. So if we use the caveat that the further away you move from the T line, that's when the three T line becomes more critical. Because if now if they close above the T three T line with buy signals, more than likely they're going to come back up and test the T line. So what's the worst case scenario? Buying in the oversold condition after buy signals, but you're still below the T line. 
you come up and if they come up and they fail the t-line you come out hopefully with a small profit or a break even but if it goes through you know you're still in, a, in the right direction uh, are you going to go through the 12 signals uh, no because I thought we were going to just do the uh, t-line analysis but I will I will show you some um, the doji is the uh, the main one doji is where they open the close at the uh, same level. That's indecision between the bulls and the bears. If we see a doji in the oversold area, what do we look for the next day? Positive trading. If it starts trading positive, we're buying immediately. The three T line is is the uh, three exponential moving average. Just acts as a, a faster alert uh, if you're if you've moved away from the T line. Again, the further away you move from the T-line. So notice where we are. We've had a, we had a bullish engulfing signal down here. Looks like a bullish engulfing signal. The bullish engulfing signal is where the previous, the uh, today opens at or below the previous day's close and closes above the, the previous day's open. The white candle completely engulfs the dark candle. Then we have the doji sandwich. Doji is where they have an indecisive day. And we have a simple rule of doji. If they open up positive, you're buying immediately because the doji sandwich will usually tell you that this day right here will be equivalent to this day right here. So you stay long until now we're starting to see that we're moving too far away from the T-line and we're starting to see sell signals. Remember the simple rule of doji. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So the Japanese rice traders illustrate what human emotions usually do. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. And I was always one of those people. And when I learned candlesticks, it turned my trading around 180 degrees. Because if I could see they're starting to sell up here or indecisive, very simple rule. If they open it lower the next day, you close out the position immediately. Where are they likely to take it to? Back to the T line. Now, I was always, that's why I wrote the third book, which is uh, Candlestick Analysis, Eliminating Your Emotions is I would hate to get out of a good profitable trade because what if this was the one that was the Dell of my lifetime that could make me rich? So I would always hold on and I'd do exactly this and I'd be some day down here selling at the same level I bought and say, what the heck was I thinking? Why didn't I take profits? Because I was worried that it would turn around and head right up without me. Well now, with a very simple uh, use of the T-line, I know that if I take profits here and it starts back up with buy signals, very simple. I know that's a J-hook pattern, which is one of the simple patterns in candlestick analysis. I can always buy back in. When I get out here, I know the probability to say it's time to get out. I can always get back in when it's time to get back in. In this case, it didn't. Let me see. How do you use the do doji sandwich in Forex? Uh, you can't. Uh, unless you're, yeah, you, you're, uh, uh, you're not going to get gaps in something like Forex that trades constantly. But obviously in stocks, uh, even in the uh, daily currency chart. So if you're not trading Forex, I, I trade the dollar, I trade all the currencies, but I trade them individually. Uh, I don't trade against the Forex against each other. So we have a three, three EMA, green, and the black one is the, uh, uh, the eight exponential moving average. The 50-day moving average is the blue, the 20 is the gray. And then there's a red one when it's on here. Um, uh, it could be any time frame. This could be a one-minute chart. I used to trade the uh, E-minis on a one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute chart combination. This could be a five, ten, fifteen, thirty, forty, or one-hour chart. This could be a daily, weekly, or monthly chart. They all look exactly the same. All right. Let's see what else we got here. And the T-line, this is what we call the T-line crunch. If we're buying down here off these buy signals, what do we want to see? We want to see them break through the 50. If they break through the 50, where are they going to? The 200. We start getting sell signals. If we take our profits, notice what's happening. The T-line, they can't close this back below the T-line. This is called the T-line crunch, where they're crunching it right back up to the resistance level. We're buying back. Once we know we've broken through and they weren't able to close back below that uh, T-line. 
So if we're buying down here, again, notice our doji sandwich. This signal right here, if you can see it, has a big tail to the downside. This is called a hammer signal. That's one of the 12 major signals. Then you've got a bullish engulfing signal that completely engulfs the body, which wasn't very big. Then your doji sandwich. There's your T-line crunch. When they break through the 50, where's your next target? The 200-day uh, moving average. Pulls back to the T-line. They can't close it. This is what we call a bobble, where they hit a resistance. They pull back. They can't close below the T-line. So even if we took profits right in here, we're buying back right here because it's telling us we've got a J-hook pattern it looks like a little J hook, and they've broken through this level. This J hook pattern gives us a very simple measurement. Wave one and wave three will be approximately the same. The uh, 2050 and 200, yes, are the simple moving averages. The 3T, the 3T and the 8T are the exponential moving averages. We also have a pattern called the fry pan bottom. Fry pan bottom looks like a fry pan bottom. You couldn't trade it one way or the other if you wanted to until we get to the breakout area. This is investor sentiment building up. Now, remember, we said we're looking for buy signals in the oversold condition. But notice where this breaks out is when the stochastics are already in the overbought area. But we know what the results are of a fry pan bottom, a very strong price move. Now, the other side of that coin is where do you take profits? So remember, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probabilities are going to come back and test it. So where do we take profits in here? Well, we flip to our 10-minute chart. As long as our 10-minute chart shows it's not really trading back below the T-line, we stay, uh, stay long. Do we start taking profits up here? Oops, let me go back one here. We start taking profits here when it's backing off because you're a good distance away. Again, that's where the 10 minute chart tells us up. Oh, they're starting. This is where they gapped it up the next day and pulling back. We closed out a position here, but in a few minutes or a half an hour later, we're buying back. Why the heck would we buy back on a stock that's going parabolic and way overbought? Because the 10 minute chart said they're still buying. And what do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A very strong price move. So when we sold, again, this could be an hourly or daily chart, a weekly chart, a monthly chart, a one-minute chart, or a 10-minute chart, whatever time frame you're, you're trading. So when we closed out here, we bought back here because what did that tell us? They weren't selling it off. We closed out the next day when it uh, uh, started trading off. So candlestick signals work for all time frames. Again, it's the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling. And then... When you start seeing those parabolic moves, that's where the 3T line becomes more effective. So even for trend analysis, let me go back and see what questions. Uh, the, bo the, the bobble. The bobble is when you hit a resistance level, it pulls back to the T line. Um, how will the recording of this session be made available? OK, Henry, that's uh, again, I uh, probably will know the answer to that for you. Um, do you use stochastics only, or do you use MACD to confirm momentum? Now, MACD is a confirm or a, a lagging indi indicator. I use the uh, signals and stochastics. Now, on some of my charts, because I can overlay MACD on the same chart as my stochastics, I use it just as a little extra fluffy to to have on there. But the stochastics are the important part, and my number one criteria is, what are the signals telling me? Uh, and again, if I see a pullback below the T-line and close out the positions, and it comes back up above the T-line, again, we have a very simple rule. As long as you're trading above the T-line, uh, you're in a strong uptrend. Um, are the moving averages, but the moving averages are all lagging. Oh. Uh, yeah, but they're targets. Doesn't, we're not trading the moving averages. We're trading the signals of what happens when they get to the moving averages. We're looking for that signal, seeing what everybody's doing when it got back to the 200-day uh, uh, moving average. This is what we call a morning star signal. Morning star signal is very simple. You're in a downtrend. You have a big down day. You have a day of indecision or doji day. 
The third day is a positive day, which has to close more than halfway up this candle. And the magnitude of this trend right here will be based upon the magnitude of this candle, how much further it closed up above the halfway point and closing above the T-line. Where was the top reversal in an evening star? Uptrend, uptrend, a day of indecision, a, an open lower after a doji, came back to the T-line, you're in a downtrend until you see the buy signal. This is not rocket science. This is just using the graphics that Japanese rice traders, the Japanese rice trader family that uh, utilized this did not become wealthy in Japan. They became legendarily wealthy. There were songs written that if you couldn't, couldn't be a lord, or if you couldn't be, I think it was the Ham, Hamna family, at least I wanted to be a lord. Um, they, they were the powerhouse for uh, centuries in Japan because they were using one very simple uh, parameter that has consistently worked in the markets ever since the beginning of investing, and that's human nature. So again, the further away you move from the T-line on big price moves, that's when the three T-line becomes more effective. That pretty much told us they weren't going up anymore. It was time to take profits here. There again, there's a doji sandwich. What do we do when there's big announcements, like a Fed announcement? We can watch to see what the one minute, five minute, 10 minute chart is doing after a big announcement. Um, how often have you seen a, uh, a company come out with excellent earnings and the stock immediately goes down? That's what candlesticks do for you is they tell you exactly what the uh, expectations were of, uh, of announcements or uh, events concerning the stock. Stochastic settings are 12.33, and that's not anything set in stone. And it was just a just a simple tweaking process that I would go back through charts, and I would tweak my stochastics to where they coincided where the bottoms were and the tops were. And 12.33, uh, basically for uh, day trading or swing trading, has worked out very well for me for the last 30 years. Uh, what is your win to loss ratio and your average winner greater than the um, Charlie, I don't have the exact answer to that. I would suspect, this will give me a time to kind of uh, go into detail about uh, how, to, how to invest. Uh, I would suspect that probably 70% of my trades are winners. Now, some of them might be three-tenths of 1%. Some of them might be 300%. But I know that every time I put on a trade, that probably two out of every three trades I put on are going to be positive. Now, that sounds pretty good, but the other part of that that most people don't really pay attention to is that if 70% of your trades are positive, what's that leave? That leaves 30% of your trades that aren't going to be good. So the Japanese rice traders show you that if that candlestick signal is acting as a uh, bullish signal telling you it's time to buy, it will also tell you when it's not working and you get right back out of the trade. I've been investing for over 40 years. I've heard every single money manager tell you to cut your losses short and let your profits run. The only problem is in the last 40 years, I've never heard a single one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. run. Candlesticks does it in a very easy mechanical manner. Um, suppose you look at Apple's close today. What is your conclusion? I think on Apple, Apple uh, closed below the T-line. It did an evening star signal about a week and a half ago. And so you should be short Apple right now. Um, are you using opening price? Uh, Linda, for what? For stochastics? I don't know. I just put it in as 1233. Why did you use a doji as a buy signal and not the previous shooting star? Uh, which one is that? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't remember which one's. Uh... Let's just put it this way. Whenever I start seeing signals, here's uh, uh, dojis, dojis, and then bullish confirmation above the T-line, that tells me they've hit bottom. If I can see that a trend channel is forming, Notice what happened down here. We had a morning star signal. Where did it occur? Smack dab off the 200 and at the same level bottomed out before. Now we're getting back up 
to that top of that trend channel, we might be taking profits, but what's keeping us in? We've got a T-line crunch that's pushing us up through this level, telling us they aren't selling off at that resistance level. This will work for Forex, bonds, stocks, commodities, currencies, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed involved. Um, what exactly do you look for in the 10 minute, five minute, and one minute chart for day trading? Same charts. This could be as easily a one minute chart as it could be a weekly chart. So if I'm day trading, uh, Oh, today I'm short uh, cotton. I do the same. I mean, they all look the same. If I saw cotton right up here doing this, I'd be going short until, and covered my short position when it came back up through the T-line. This could be off a one-minute chart. This could be off a five-minute chart or a 10-minute chart. A doji sandwich. Let me see if I can see one here. Here's kind of a double doji sandwich. A doji sandwich is a bullish day, then a doji. In this case, there was two dojis. And then remember our simple rule of a doji. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it. So if they start opening it positive and trading positive, the doji sandwich will tell us that this day right here will usually be the same magnitude as this day right here with the dojis as in between as a sandwich. Um, an evening star is, yes, a bearish reversal. So anyways, this last chart, as we can see, what we wanted to see was whether they're going to reverse it. Notice that you had a bearish engulfing signal but it didn't confirm the next day. So that told us maybe the T-line is acting a little bit more aggressive, and we stay long, and if they break up through this level, that's telling me that trend channel is now broken. We're still in an uptrend. Where do most people sell? A panic sell at the bottom. A lot of people say, well, where do we grab for that fallen knife? Candlestick signals tell you exactly when there's a change of investor sentiment. Are the T-line and the parabolic SAR Comparable. I don't even know what a parabolic SAR is. Sorry about that. That's probably because I've probably used every, almost every trading technique there is out there. This is the most simplest and the most profitable. I used to be the worst investor in the world. I would contribute to the markets every single day. Now I take uh, money out of the markets every month. Um, uh, Johnny, I have no idea. I, I don't trade Forex at all. Um, uh, let's see, on Apple, I would I would guess. Now, uh, people say, well, do you use other things like the Fibonacci numbers and that sort of thing? I use this. But if I see a trend and I see a reversal pulling back and there's nothing up here, then I'll throw anything on there that tells me or gives me ideas of where they're going to pull it back to, whether they're going to pull it back to the 50 or the 38% retracement, 50% retracement, 62% retracement on a 50 not Fibonacci number. Is there a trend line coming down from previous trading? All I want to do is see at a technical level that everybody else is watching what type of signals occur at those, those levels. All right, let's see. Again, yeah, further away, from the T line, the three T line becomes more effective. It's usually going to come back. Now, what's the worst case scenario? We're taking profits, and then notice what we have here. This is the bullish engulfing signal where this white candle completely engulfed the candle the previous day. Again, another bullish engulfing. Now we've got our pattern, what we call the J hook pattern. So if this is wave one, our expectation is that this move right here will be the same magnitude. Uh, again, this is not rocket science. I tell people, as long as you can see, you can trade candlesticks. And I kind of put it into the same equation as the uh, old couple that are getting ready for bed, and she's standing there naked in front of the mirror, and she says, look at me. My face is wrinkly. My arms are thin. My legs are scrawny. My butt's spindly, or my butt's scrawny. My legs are spindly. She turned around to her husband and said, is there anything you can say about my body that would make me feel good? He goes, well, your eyesight's still pretty good. So as long as you can see, you can analyze what's going on in investor sentiment just knowing what the, the simple rules of each of the signals are. So a lot of times in the morning on, a, on the market, you'll see a gap up. Is it a gap and crap type thing? Well, you can see based upon what's happening on the five-minute chart or the 10-minute chart. As long as they stay above the uh, uh, T-line, you know that they're still in that uptrend. The further away we move from the T-line, where do you take profits? Well, if we can see up here that we're a heck of a long ways, not only from the T-line, but the 3T-line, 
we just flip to our 10 minute chart and say, whoops, we're starting to see some selling. We're taking our profits up here, which would equate to, uh, and even a little bit quicker, we can go to the five minute chart. There's our shooting star doji. Shooting star looks like a shooting star. Then it start, follows selling. We're closing out the position up at that level, which means we were taking our profits, whoops, up in this range instead of waiting for the daily to give us a, uh, a, a sell signal. We can also do it on a big breakout. Should we be buying here? Oh, I'm still going up. Should we be buying here? Yeah, I'm still going up. Should we be buying here? Well, you flip to your 10-minute chart. I can be buying here. Is this the right time to buy? Is it later going to sell off? Could be, but right at this time, it's telling me you can still be buying. Or it's pulled back again. Still can't close below the T-line. You can be buying. Pulled back again. You can still be buying. As long as it doesn't close below the uh, T-line on the 10-minute chart, and you can see a little bit faster what's happening based upon what's going on in the five-minute chart. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see, the Fibonacci 50 takes it back as far as 120. Uh, yeah, remember, we're not, we're not owning it. We're, if we're taking our profits and we're seeing if something's pulling back, we're just seeing where that pullback might be and we're start to watch where the candlestick buy signals occur. This is your J-hook pattern. Notice we had kind of a doji sandwich breakout. We had the evening star signal taking profits. Then notice what's happening here. Remember. A doji represents indecision. A series of dojis represents greater indecision. Then once we start seeing the, which way they're taking that decision, not only know we, which way it's going, but we know what type of pattern we're in. Wave one and wave three are going to be equivalent. So even if I miss this move and I saw this setup, I know that this trade right here is going to be about the same magnitude as that move right there. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. This is a bullish harami, which opens on the at or above the previous day's close and closes below the previous day's open uh, in Western terminology known as an inside day. But uh, in Japanese, it means pregnant woman. There's her body and there's her little belly sticking out and it essentially tells you that the selling has stopped. So candlestick analysis is pretty easy for entry and exit strategies also. If we see that the selling has stopped and they opened up positive the next day, what's that telling us? That now they're buying. It's time to start getting into this list. Now, you might get back out because notice, notice what it did. It failed at the T-line. But then, this is what we call a slow curve. It comes up through, we're back to buying, and then look where it breaks out. We stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T-line, and when it comes to the 50, if, even if we don't have a full position here, we're buying here, even though we're in the overbought condition, because where do you think everybody and their brother is watching to see if it's going to get through, through the 50-day moving average? Hello from the UK. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the T-line or the uh, candlesticks don't tell you... Uh, you know, what the market's going to do or what the price is going to do, but you do have the evaluation of where it could go based upon different price movements. Um, but it gives you a direction with a high probability of which, which way the markets are going. Uh, if you are day trading on one minute playing retracements and you have a signal, can you enter on the next confirming signal before it closes? Usually I'm not trading off the one minute. I'm usually trading off the 10 minute. If my 10 minute is starting to set up where it's gotten to the oversold area, and let's say it's right near the 50 day, uh, uh, the moving average, 50 moving average on the 10 minute chart, and starts looking like it's going to do a hammer signal, I can flip to the uh, five minute chart and see what that's doing if it's already up above the T line. And if it's looking good and I'm ready to get in, I'll flip down to the one minute chart at that point to make sure that the one minute chart isn't ready to turn back down, which would kind of then if uh, nullify the uh, five minute and the 10 minute chart. Um, but that next candle could drop below. Uh, Mike, every candle could do everything you wanted to. 
what we're doing is playing the probabilities of what happens with human nature time after time. Uh, so you can always do a woulda, coulda, shoulda. I'm buying when the probabilities say it's time to be buying, and I close out when the probabilities say it's time to close out. Most of your charts seem to be daily charts. Do you keep positions open? Yes, I keep them over the weekend. Um, I'm a swing trader, so again, my trades usually last for two to ten trading days. But on my smaller accounts where I'm trading, uh, I'll, I'll trade intraday because uh, I'm sitting here watching all the time. Uh, I'll trade commodities during the middle part of the day. Um, how do you screen for Scott stocks? Uh, you can set up scans. The, the whole process was that when I first set this up years ago, it was so that I could trade for 45 minutes in the, in the morning, put on price, put on stock positions, go play golf for the rest of the day and come back for the last 30 minutes and see what I need to do with my positions, um, which was a great idea, but uh, now I haven't been on a golf course for 10 years. So the scans are very simple. We've just developed scans for uh, TOS, Think or Swim, Trade Station. Uh, they're set up for Ninja, Metastock, uh, uh, Warden Brothers. So our formulas are everywhere. And uh, so in less than 20 minutes, if you're not experienced with candlesticks, in less than 20 minutes each day, you can scan very quickly through all the uh, 8,700 trading entities out there and come up with the best uh, trade setups for the next day. So th again, the nice thing about uh, candlesticks is it puts you in situations where the big price moves are greatly in your favor and you know what to do with them. A lot of people say, I don't want to be, uh, this one's broken out. Notice that slow, slow curve breakout. Then there's profit taking. So you might close out the position. But when you get back in, notice they couldn't even close this below the three T line, let alone the T line. And we had the little morning star, then the uh, uh, doji sandwich. And we know what the results of a doji sandwich are. There's going to be more upside. So this is what we call a 45 degree, a big breakout. And then it moves in a 45 degree. And we stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T line. We can analyze the transports. Uh, we can analyze the uh, NASDAQ. Let me go down here. Uh, and basically, it just boils down to, if we see candlestick buy signals uh, uh, coming up off of major moving averages and they are confirming, this is what we call your best friend. When you see a doji followed by a gap up, we call it a doji because not only will the uptrend be strong or uh, the uptrend be in progress, but it will be extremely strong. So I guess that's about uh, all I got today. Uh, I think. Let me do this. I think uh, Pat has put out a special for everybody. So let me, uh, if you want to take a look at the special, uh, uh, I'll keep talking here and answering questions. Um, did I see you are now offering a plug-in for Thinkorswim? Yes. Um, yes, and it, it not only identifies the signals, but it will it will bring them up and there'll be a little banner showing you what the signals are. So for those that are still in the process of learning candlesticks, now again, I tell people um, on, our, on our website, we've got a chat room uh, every day. We've got about 250 people in there. We also have a separate chat room just for option traders. But basically every time we put on a trade, we know the probabilities are in our favor that from the historic 400 years of research by the Japanese race traders, that we're gonna be in the right place at the right time. So through the years, uh, we've been training people how to look for the right signals. Now we've got them developed where the scans are on, let's say on Thinkorswim, uh, TradeStation. We've been doing it on uh, Warden Brothers for years. Metastock has all our, our signals. And each day, I put out two or three stock picks uh, each evening on a video for our members. Not so that people have stock picks, but we do it in a video so you can still learn what the rationale and what the what the confirming indicators were for those positions to be buys or sell. Um, we don't like to just put out picks so that people can just have picks because a lot of times if you just tell people what to do and they don't understand why, 
they don't learn anything. It's like the uh, cop that was standing on the street corner, and here comes this drunk in his car weaving down the street. He, the cop blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, walks up to the car, and he looks in the back seat, and there's a penguin sitting there. So he goes, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your back seat? And the drunk said, oh, I found him out on the street, and I don't know what to do with him. And the cop said, well, take him to the zoo. And the drunk said, oh, that's a good idea. Well, the next day, the cop's standing on the street corner. Here comes the drunks weaving down the street. He blows his whistle, pulls the car over, walks up to the car, and sure enough, the penguin is sitting in the back seat. And the cop said, I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. And the drunk said, I did. He liked it so much. Today, we're going to a baseball game. So if you don't understand why you're supposed to be doing something, the results aren't going to be uh, all that great for you. So uh, um, do you like trading in the, in the direction of the 45? Yes. Anytime you see a big gap up situation, um, and that was, if I can do this without uh, uh, goof up things too much, this is Apple today. But notice where Apple started its uptrend. This is, notice the gap up. And there's the 45 degree off of there. Um, the kicker signal is your strongest signal. Kicker signal, you're in a downtrend. It opens here and closes here. The next day, they gap it up at or above the previous day's open and goes the opposite direction. That tells you they've kicked that investment in the opposite direction. You stay long. That was on ADP that we've been in for, uh, and just got out of yesterday. The same scenario occurred in flex. Kicker signal closed out uh, when it closed back below the T line. We're basically looking for patterns and signals that have worked consistently through for centuries. Um, let's see. I think it's CYBR is one of our recommendations right now because. There's our fry pan bottom. There's our breakout. There's our pullback. And notice our pullback doesn't have a sell signal in it. It's just pulled back, traded indecisively. Now it's starting to move back up. It's broken through this downward trend channel. This is a J hook pattern, which if this move right here came from 30 to 70, this move right here should move from 60 to approximately 100. And that's, so we're buying the calls on that. Where is our stop loss? This shouldn't close back below the T-line. If it closes back below the T-line, we're back out of the position. Uh, the chat rooms are in our room at candlestickforum.com. Uh, we're open uh, every day. We've, as I said, we've got 250 traders in there. I do a session every uh, Monday night for members. We go through analysis just like this to see what is the markets doing. The Dow. As you can see, has ever since this big move here, this was a bullish harami off the 200-day moving average back up through the T-line. Notice your doji sandwich that took us through the uh, uh, the 50. And so we started taking some profits the other day, except we can do a very clean analysis or a much more accurate analysis. Notice what the NASDAQ is doing. When it did this big hammer signal, and the hammer signal has a big tail, two times greater than the body, and then they confirmed it the next day. There's our little J-hook pattern, and then they've closed it above the T-line today. So what's our uptrend? Remember, our uptrend is very simple. As long as it stays above the T-line, you're in an uptrend. What are all the moving averages used with this? Again, the 200-day, the 50-day, and the 20-day simple moving averages. That's what every major money manager has on their charts throughout the world. We can see exactly what they're doing at those moving averages. The T line is your eight exponential moving average, the black line, and the green line is your three T. The further away you move from the T line, uh, the more uh, pertinent your uh, three T line becomes. Uh, the S&P and the, uh, uh, the markets, looks like the S&P has bounced. Now, we have a doji type day. And remember our simple rule of a doji. The price or the the uh, trend is going to move in the direction of how they open it. So if they open this lower, that pretty much tells us they're still below the T line. They're still selling off. If they open, if tomorrow we wake up and the pre-market futures are positive, that pretty much tells us we're in kind of a J-hook pattern that we still have more upside. Where to get the uh, trade station plug-in? Oh, I don't know that for a fact. Uh, 
Um, I don't know. It's uh, on any information like that. Uh, Raleigh, you all have the, uh, the links for the uh, trade station or uh, tosses uh, uh, new specials. The too late to short Apple. Whoops. I don't think so. Your stochastics are still heading down. You can see the evening star signal. Remember, they had a doji a good distance away from the T line. It opened lower. Where are they coming back to? The uh, uh, the T line. Right now, they're trading a slow curve below the T line. I would suspect they're probably coming back down to the 50-day moving average. And let's see, is this a book or DVD that is on sale? I think it's the uh, it's the uh, DV or the training on the T line. I have gotten I've written three books on candlestick analysis. If I was going to buy one of them, it would be high profit candlestick patterns. That is the meat one. That would tell you which signals work the best and kind of puts in the candlestick analysis in a concise manner. Um, uh, let's see. I purchased the five video a couple of days ago. Uh, second book, yes. Uh, so, all right. Well, I tell people you don't have to overanalyze uh, candlesticks, and I usually put that in the uh, example of the uh, lady that brings her parakeet into the vet, lays it down on the table, and says, "Can you help my parakeet? He's been my best friend for years." And the vet says, well, ma'am, I think your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh, no, isn't there something you can do? Um, and he goes, all right. So he goes to the back of his clinic, brings in a big cat, lays the cat next to the parakeet. The cat kind of sniffs it, looks up at the uh, vet, kind of shakes his head. He goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no, but he's been my best friend. Are you sure? Can't you do something just to make sure? And he goes, all right. So he goes back to the back of his clinic, brings in a great big Labrador retriever, comes bounding in, puts his paws up on the table, sniffs the bird, kind of looks up at the vet, shakes his head, goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no. So they go out to the front desk. He goes, well, that'll be $250. She goes, you're charging me $250 to tell me my parakeet was dead? He goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for 18 bucks. Then he wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So I tell people, you don't have to overanalyze candlesticks. It's it's this information has worked for centuries. It's just the graphic depiction of what's going on in uh, human emotions. Uh, yes, you can get the uh, books through Candlestick Forum. Uh, that's, I think, well, the cheapest place to get them. I think they're also on Amazon, uh, uh, Barnes & Noble, all those places. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, I, I just sit here each day. Um, I would recommend getting high-profit candlestick patterns first. Um, Tesla has had a hard time getting out of its own way. You can see what the trend is, and you can see what happens every time it comes up to the moving averages. And notice what it did today. It still couldn't get back up above the T line. You're not in the oversold area. So that kind of tells us we're still in a in a slow downtrend. We have, and so what makes this relatively easy is once you see a buy signal, you can stay long. We're long right now. Notice the slow curve, fry pan bottom, and the breakout here. We were uh, we were buying back in at this level, buying calls, and this not only does the uh, charts tell you which direction you're going, but if you're an option trader. It makes the ultimate timing element. We're buying right here and right here because we know this is a breakout. We know what the results of a fry pan bottom breakout is, a strong price move. We also had bought Bitta today on the open because notice what happened here. There was that little T-line crunch. Then yesterday, they gapped it up and did a doji through the moving averages. Made it very simple. If it opened positive today, 
what do we have? We had a doji sandwich. So we're buying immediately. So what knowing what the patterns are doing keeps you from being, I want to say, afraid to be buying up. A lot of people say, well, I don't want to buy a stock stock that's up three, five, ten, fifteen, twenty percent. You do if it's coming out of a pattern because it's probably going a lot higher. Whoops. Boeing, there was that uh, bullish engulfing. Notice where the sell was. You had that bearish Tarami and it opened with Doji and it opened lower the next day. It was time to take profits. There was the buy signal. What did, what did that buy signal tell you? That they weren't closing back below the T line. So if I sold out over here, I'm buying back over here. Do I mind selling here and buying back here? Absolutely not. Selling here just tells me or keeps me out of a position that might be going like this. So if this trade went up, whatever this is, 30 points, and I only got 25 of it, I know that those 25, every time I was in the trade, it was going in, in my direction. T-line crunch, I'm trying to think of which one was the T-line crunch. T-line crunch is basically, you know, here's a wee little, nah, that's too small. T-line crunch is if you have a, a moving average that you can see is acting as resistance. Which one was it that I just did? Was it Bitta? Yeah, Bitta kind of had the T-line crunch. Notice how they couldn't really close this below the T-line and it kept crunching it right up into the 50 until they broke it out. So if I was owning this, and look how doubtful it looked in here, but as long as it didn't close below the T-line, it closed right at the T-line, or so the next day it had to close above the T-line, which it did. And it could also show us what type of pattern it was doing. It's doing that J-hook. Amazon, big gap up off the bullish engulfing signal that broke through the resistance. Again, this is the bobble. Notice how it came up and bobbled. It couldn't close below the T-line. We're buying right back here or we're buying here on a huge day because what type of uh, action are we going to get after a huge day? We can see they were buying after the uh, open. Notice that Amazon's been in this 45 degree. When do you sell it? When you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. So again, this is not rocket science. This is, this is just common sense put into a graphic depiction. So with that, uh, thank you everybody. Raleigh, uh, Yana, thank you also for hosting today. Um, the candlestick sell signals are the shooting star, the bearish harami, the bearish engulfing signal, the bearish kicker, the evening star signal. So there's about six bearish and six bullish. And the nice thing is, not only have the Japanese rice traders illustrated graphically what the signals look like, but they also tell you what the psychology was that created those signals. And once you understand that, you pretty much have the same grasp of analysis as somebody that's been trading in the market for 50 years. So with that, thank you, everybody. Hopefully we'll see you in the chat rooms.